Welcome to my comparison review today of two popular chargers. I have the Xstar VC4 and Nightcore D4 in both together so I thought rather than making individual video reviews for each one I'd have them both together just so you can sum up the advantages and disadvantages of both. You'll see with the size the Nightcore is a little bit smaller than the Xstar model. Um, a little bit on the length but more so on the width. In terms of features and functionality, these two are quite similar, but there are some important differences which we'll get into shortly and a bit later on. Note the larger bay sizes on the X-Star on the two outer bays. Right, moving in a bit closer on the VC4, this is the bundle you get with it. Uh, travel bag, the charging cable which you plug in, it's a USB cable, charge and manual. Moving in a bit closer, um, large display at the top and a single button in the middle. And again, note those wider side bays um, allowing for bigger capacity cells and wider cells to fit in. Onto the cable, it's a proprietary sort of barrel design on one end. And you'll see there's just this single input at the top over to a USB plug. And again, a close up look on that. It says the 2.1 amps input. On the underside, we have six silicone pads and some ventilation. And on the other side is their scratch and verification code just to ensure it's genuine. On the main cover of the charger, just a picture, I don't get much information, but on the sign it gives you the cells. Note we can charge up to D size and the C and the two, uh, two series and three series lithiums. And we get an in-depth look at some more features here. This charge has some interesting features, uh, including some activation technology as well. And on the back it gives you a bit more detail and depth on the specifics of the charger so if you want to pause that and have a look at that the main thing to note here is apart from the different types of batteries that it takes you have uh, one amp charging for two channels the two side channels and a half an amp charging for four cells in use at the same time we move over to the d4 now you get a figure of eight mains lead with this which will vary depending on the region that you're in this is a UK one so it's the three pin the charger and an instruction manual no cases supplied with the night core closer look at the night you'll see the cell spacing is pretty much the same on each of them and the buttons are on the side with this model so we have uh, two buttons on the side Build on both of these chargers is very good. There isn't really much to choose between them. They're both nice solid chargers with, and they have metal rails too. This is a look at the side buttons. They have two functions, and uh, slot and mode, but also you can activate the lower charging rate as well with the bottom one or turn off the display with the top one. Looking at the figure of eight cable now, and that plugs into the top section. A bit stiff on this because it's a brand new cable and charger. And looking at the top section, we also have a 12 volt input, so you can use a car charger with this or possibly a solar panel. And on the underside, ventilation slots again. Four pads on the bottom of the D4. If we move to the front now of the box, you'll see just a basic overview of the different types of batteries and some of the sizes that it can take. And on the side, it will give you the output rating, which is rated to 0.375 for four cells and 0.75 of an amp for two cells. And on the back gives you a more in-depth look at the specifics of the charger. Uh, it's important to note that this charger supports the lithium iron phosphate, lower voltage lithium cells, and the VC4 does not. Um, that's quite an important difference if, if that type of battery is important to you. Now, one point I will note is you do need a good charger with the VC4. Note the red port on this USB charger. It's a mains charger, and that can deliver the 2.1 amps for the maximum charging rate. Onto the display, you'll see we have two larger dials. They show the voltage and they will change depending on whether you have lithium or nickel metal hydride or cadmium. Uh, below that is the milliamps an hour that has actually been put into the battery. And uh, in the middle, we have a maximum uh, output in amps. That's not necessarily the actual charging rate. Onto the D4, completely different type of display. You can see all of the four channels with five stages on the bars at the top and it also gives you some additional information. It doesn't tell you the capacity though. Uh, you can see on the right hand side, some of the lettering isn't activated. So that shows you some of the options that can come up and we'll have a look at that shortly. 
This is just to show you what happens when you power the two of them on. Do note that the night core will turn itself off the display if it's left unattended with no batteries in it. To turn off the display on the X-Star, you just press and hold the central button that turns off the backlight. The display is still on, you can see it in good light. And on the night core, again, just push and hold the button. The top button will deactivate the backlight. Just inserting a lithium cell into the VC4. As the wider bays are bigger, you might need to reposition the cells for smaller cells, particularly with AAs and AAAs. You'll see now we have voltage display come up, so that will give you an indication of how far discharged or charged a battery is when you insert it. Now I have four cells inserted here and you'll be able to see at the top it's gone down to half an amp, so it's charging all four cells at half an amp. Note the LEDs showing the channels, one, two, three and four. They turn green when the charging is complete which is useful even if you have the display off you can see which batteries have charged and you just rotate through the banks by pressing the central button. They'll auto switch over if you insert new batteries into the last one that you used. That's the only real control that you have on the VC4 other than turning the display off. Inserting a battery into the night core, I'm just testing an already charged cell and you can see already it's come up 4.2 volts which is the optimal charge and it's instantly detected that it's already charged, it doesn't need to be charged. Now if I insert another cell, this is one thing that I discovered which wasn't in the manual, if I put a different cell in, that's, um, you will get a lower charge rate if you use banks 1 and 4, even if it's not actually charging in the other bank and 2 and 3. So avoid using those if you want the higher charge rate. So you can put 1 and 3, um, 3 and 4 and you'll see the charge rate coming up at 375. Now if I pull out the first cell then the charge rate will go up. That wasn't mentioned in the manual. I read it online in a review as well as seeing it myself. I'm just pulling that out now and you'll see it go up to 750. So maybe that's a feature where you can slow a charge by using different bays, um, but it didn't really tell you that properly in the manual. What I'm doing now is just going to activate the slower speed charging. You'll see the low has come up on that cell you can activate these individually for each channel so the low charging is possible on specific channels and you have to um, do it yourself. You'll see the low coming up here even though it's a lithium. Um, I put on screen the charging rates it varies between if you have two and four cells inserted into the charger. Why, why would you want the low charging rate? Possibly for a slow charge can be good for some batteries, some newer cells possibly could extend the life and you'll see here that I have activated the charging for the lithium iron phosphate. It's 3.7 volts. There's no way for the VC4 to know that it has to stop at 3.7 volts. So other than pulling the battery out early, um, it will try to charge them at 4.2. So the, really I wouldn't use the VC4 for those types of batteries. That is an important difference if you use the lithium iron phosphate cells. I'm moving over another cell now to this side. And you'll see it automatically switches to that channel when you insert a cell. Both of these charges are pretty easy to use. You can't really go wrong other than adjusting the voltage for the lower voltage lithium cells on the D4. That's pretty much the only manual intervention you'll need to do. Personally, I think 750 um, milliamps is a bit higher for a AAA. It's not dangerous. You can charge them at that rate. Um, but it's, I would generally use the lower charging rate for cells like that. AAs are fairly happy to be charged up to 1 amp. Both of these chargers can be a little bit fiddly with the smaller batteries, the D4 perhaps a bit less so due to the smaller bays. On the other hand, the VC4 can take two of the bigger lithium type cells or C and D ones at the same time and the D4 can only accept one of those in the middle bay. So that could be 
something to consider if you are a very heavy user of the larger uh, wider girth batteries then the VC4 might possibly be the best bet for that because you can charge two of them at the same time. It doesn't take long to get used to the D4, it's a pretty easy charger to use. Those two buttons are not exactly difficult to work out how to cycle through the display. Um, onto the VC4 on the right we can see that it's completed a charge on some of them. When you're looking at the display on the VC4 and the milliamps now, just bear in mind that that's just telling you how much is put into the cell. It won't always give you the correct capacity depending on how charged or discharged it is unless they're completely um, discharged. Only then will it give you a fairly good idea of the actual capacity. Neither of these two chargers have any sort of test functions built into them. On the other hand, this charger does, but you can see I have a battery inserted here and it's come up null. It can't uh, charge the battery, it doesn't think there's one included in the slot. So what I'm going to do is test the D4 to see if that's going to work. And you can see here on the voltmeter, zero volts. So I'll put it into the D4. And see if anything comes up. There's a slight voltage came up there. It's putting a slight current into it and it's come up error. So what I did, just flick the cell down slightly just to reactivate it again. I'll just pull it down a bit and then we'll see if it works now. And you can see it's starting to charge the zero volt AA battery. I've already tested the VC4 on this and the VC4 has a longer uh, pre-charge period and it, the activation has worked perfectly on the VC4 before. I wanted to test see whether the night core would do a good job and at least on nickel metal hydride it does. There's no voltage coming off of that battery and it successfully managed to activate it so it can now charge it. Haven't come across many batteries like that. Occasionally older cells could be a sign that they're wearing out. Could also be a sign that um, Maybe they've been overcharged before, they haven't particularly been well looked after, or they've been in storage a long time. Lithiums, I've rarely found lithium cells have zero voltage on them or really low voltage, but it can happen. Both of these chargers should be able to activate those cells. Moving over to the VC4 now. So for zero volt batteries, at least with nickel metal hydride, both of these can activate cells, and that's good news if you've got a lot of batteries around that you've forgotten about. You can see here the charge times I'm cycling through and the timer freezes on the D4 when it's finished. Quick summary on the VC4, the main strengths and weaknesses. I like the faster charging rate. You can charge an amp for two batteries or half an amp for four. Uh, you can also take two of the bigger cells at the same time. Uh, that's something you can't do on the D4 and you, that in turn means you can accept more battery sizes and the LED display will tell you if it's charged even if the main LCD is off. Um, disadvantages would be you can't charge the lithium ion phosphates. Um, the other one for me would be the barrel tip connector. Honestly, if you lose the cable or something, you have to find the exact same one. I would have much preferred they went with a micro USB or a type C, something which you can get your hands on a bit easier. On the D4, um, this shares different strengths and weaknesses. It can charge the um, lithium ion phosphate cells and nickel cadmium. Um, you can set the charging rate for the channels individually and the display is probably easier to read um, once the main display is on it's quicker to see what's happening in the status of each battery and the mains power figure of eight very common connector if you lose it or damage it it's very easy to find another one downsides for me would be the slower charging rate compared to the vc4 and the fact that you can only charge one of the larger cells at a time